<laughs> this is kind of funny. The other day I made a video about the Consumer Reports ranking the best HVAC system where it showed American Standard is the best and uh, the Amanda Goodman being the worst. After it ended, it brought up like, you know, this related video, which is this, HVC Forum, which brand is better and why. Um, and it's a guy I, I subscribe to, so it's probably why I brought it up also. <laughs> and the funny thing is, you know, everybody's talking, you know, stuff on there. And of course, some people are wise, you know, like, like Goodman is junk. Anyway, up in here, you know, of course, what is this? Goodman ads, because Goodman, of course, is sold to the do it yourself for all the time. No EPA needed, just click and order. And I'm sure if you do a search, you're probably going to find even brands like Train probably available for sale. Somebody's going to buy it and resell it, but nothing like Goodman. Goodman's just well known of being just sold. Anybody, even from some of their vendors, will sell it right to an end user that's not even a technician, no EPA card, nothing. And I'm not lying. I mean, I've seen it happen. So anyway, they're just cheap stuff. And, you know, I like to see what they got, but, you know, they have a couple two-stage units, you know, but they're still way behind the time, you know, over a decade, two decades behind. So they got this, like, this is their, you know, premier unit, their 18 seer unit, and it's all it's got in it is a two-stage Ultra Tech Copeland in it, you know, nothing, nothing big, just unloads and drops down to like 70% capacity on first stage, it's nothing big, um, of course, American Standard and Train, you know, re-released true 100% variable speed. And I'm talking 100%, like it says, it goes in increments of one-tenth of 1%, you know, as it ramps up and down to try to maintain within half a degree of your thermostat setting. Set a start and stop and whatever, it just has a real wide range of operating. The compressor is true variable speed, not just, you know, an unloader to drop capacity a little bit, two-stage. And the reason I say they brought it out again, which a lot of people don't realize, is Train made 100% variable speed residential units um, early 90s. It might even have premiered in the late 80s, but I know it was early 90s. My old archive folder here, and I'm talking like just in this one folder alone, how many pictures do I have? 1,800 pictures. So I just found these ones and moved them into this folder. This... You know, let's make it a good shot of that overall scenario. 2005, I took this picture. This unit was like a 1992 train that has 100% variable speed, variable refrigerant flow. <laughs> yeah, so they just brought it out again. It kind of flopped back then because I think it was way ahead of its time and way beyond what technicians could work on. And it was definitely well beyond this company I was working for for a little bit. Uh, their abbreviations are DSC here in Phoenix, Arizona. And, you know, they, of course, at this house, let's get an overall picture here of the inside here. There's one of the original furnaces. It's an XV90, I think it's called, variable speed. It was one of the early variable speed ones that was made to that unit out there. And then they replaced one of them with this new American standard here. But the thing was, this wasn't compatible with the original system. The original system was as a ramping up and down variable cooling system or and heating where the newer ones are just first stage second stage you know so and then on the wall they had this circuit board right here that inter everything tied to way ahead of its time the thermostat this is the thermostat and I don't have really good pictures of it but it's like it had a bar graph that ramped up and down right there zero to a hundred percent because in the outdoor unit here is a built-in VFD driver. Let's see which picture is good. Yeah, see right here? And it had liquid refrigerant coming up. The copper line went through the heat sink a couple times back down. So liquid refrigerant through this aluminum heat sink was keeping it cool. So it was uh, 230 volt single phase coming in. And it was basically whatever voltage it was, three phase out to the three phase compressor, which I'll show you here in a little bit. I found some literature on it. So it's pretty badass, you know, way ahead of its time. Filter boards, all the stuff you like you see in the new Daikins and LGs and trains and everything. Now, this stuff came out early 90s, late 80s, whatever it was. Old XV 1500. This one next to it was a 1400, just a single stage. But that one I was working on, it was, and here's the old furnace, I believe. Just 
long time ago. There's the variable speed weather time heat pump. The reason I was involved was, you know, I went over there and the installers, you know, put a new furnace in. Oh, I can't get it to work. This was DSC for you. They would just get a couple of wires and get something to turn on. And then they would leave and call, oh, yeah, we installed it. It's good to go. No, it didn't work right. Customer, you know, called and complained and stuff, as usual with those dipshits. So I, <laughs> dude, I'm like, a, I've always been like a geek and they call me MacGyver. But this circuit board, I just, I just had to do what I had to do to get it working. I made this from parts at Radio Shack. Let's see, I think I have some closer pictures of that part. It's not the greatest pictures, but basically this is a quad comparator IC chip. I bought it, all this at Radio Shack and soldered together on the spot. Pretty badass. Uh, <laughs> back in the day, it wasn't a microcontroller. I didn't need that really. But basically the um, thermostat and that control board system had like a, a, a pulse width modulated signal going to the outdoor unit um, to go to this controls here. And then that told it what commanded what capacity to be at. Well, the new furnace was just your typical green wire for fan all the time, which is like 50%, I think, or something. And then you had Y1, which I don't know, might have been a little more CFM depending where you put the dip switches, and then you had Y2. So I'm like, all right, well, I need to make this blower work with the system that they still have. So <laughs> basically, I took made this thing take that uh, pulse width modulated signal, which is just your duty cycle, probably five volt square wave coming in, you know, and then it varied the duty cycle pulse width modulation. And I think I filtered it so it just made a variable zero through five volt signal as the capacity increased. Th this is a comparator. So you have a couple different inputs and basically set the threshold, which was a potentiometer for whatever volts. And then when the voltage of the other input exceeds that, the output goes from a logical low to a high, five volts, basically, the five volts to drive the little read relay. I uh, use these because they, they, they pull such a little current, I could wire right to this IC. And then uh, when it exceeds, the next other comparator was looking for a little higher voltage and then it would close and do the second one. So these read relays were taking 24 volts back to Y1 and Y2. So I think I got green to bring on the blower as soon as the system would start, because I think I did have a green something like that. I was able to wire over the furnace. And then when it ramped up to a certain capacity, it brought in Y1 and a little more capacity, like 75 or 80%. I let it go ahead and just give it Y2. And Y2 had a little delaying and ramping anyway. So it kind of made this system <laughs> kind of work. It didn't have the right CFMs at all the time, but it was better than just making it run one CFM all the time, which is how the dipshit installers at DSC left it. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, I mean, like I said, that system was filter board, transformer, uh, there's another filter actually too, just way ahead of its time. And here's like the new furnace they put in. It just had the regular green, y low and Y. You know, I got the BK, I think it was for humidifier, but just didn't have the interface it needed. So I found this. Of course, I didn't have this way back when I did that. You know, the internet wasn't like it is now. So variable speed it. This is, uh, this. see this manual? This is the last revision of it, 1994. That's the last revision of it, which means, you know, it already existed, you know, for a while before that. So you got your, it's kind of interesting, it has basic variable speed motor theory. So in this manual, you know, it kind of shows you the system, and it says that the indoor fan and the outdoor fan changes with compressor speed. They were true variable speed, and the compressor, of course, was. So, you know, and had your system controller, thermostat, and your humidistat, which was optional. Back in, like, 1990, so it was, like, way, like, here, you know, way advanced. You know, compressor speed ranges from 1950 RPM to 6950 RPM. How do you like that? Soft start. These were all the characters of soft start, this. Just like you see in the brand new VFD or the VFR or VF, what was it called? VFV, which is what Daikin calls it now. You know, pretty awesome. This was the thermostat that was that board, XV eighteen hundred. Yeah, they had a fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred. So I don't know, I don't know what the difference was, but that one I was working on, I thought it said fifteen hundred on it. Is it older? The old. I think this. I think the blower still had the square module on the variable speed blower. That's how old this. Where the standard was. Damper, damper. Oh, this is a zone system because it could do zoning. I mean, excellent zoning with it. And then look at this. 
ECM, they give you the basic theory, you know, three phase round stator permanent magnet rotor. Regular AC motor theory, motor speed, kind of showing you kind of a lot of the stuff how it works. This is in a train manual on train's website. Here's your compressor drive. It's an inverter, a three phase variable frequency and voltage output. So variable frequency and voltage, just like any VFD AC now, it's basically IGBT technology, just it's old. There's your electrical system diagram, you know, showing how, you know, filtered it. Full wave DC going into that, you know, and then it was driving three phase, you know, simulated AC back to that. Variable speed command was in that one wire. And I don't know what this is for, some sort of feedback, but this is that wire coming from that controller on the wall that I interfaced into my comparator circuit to, to stage basically Y1 and Y2 as that compressor was surpassing, you know, different capacity, you know, thresholds just to kind of give it some variable speed means, and this is the old motor, so. This same thing they still pretty much been doing for years, this is way old, you know. So, all sorts of stuff in this manual. <laughs> way ahead of its time. So anyway, just pretty interesting, you know. You know, it's like, uh, this isn't exactly, it's more polished, but it's not the first time train made variable speed. Um, re residential system, a true variable speed one. Just like um, the Chevy Volt. That's not the first electric car General Motors sold. General Motors sold an electric car in the early 90s built off the Saturn platform. And there was a bunch of shady political deals, basically, just when they got new battery technology, giving them 200 mile range. Somebody quashed that by buying out their patents and a bunch of weird shady things. And uh, guess what? As the leases, they were leased cars, they wouldn't let anybody purchase the cars. The lease ran out. They took all the cars back and they crushed them right here in, you know, in Arizona over in Mesa <laughs> in the 90s. You could find a documentary called Who Killed the Electric Car? Make you all forget about it. And then like a couple decades later, oh, the Chevy Volt. Chevy's got an electric car now. Yeah, they had one before. Just like a train had one before. So this isn't like exactly that groundbreaking. It's just... Maybe the technicians are now up to the level where they could service it because, you know, I guess, you know, back when they made uh, this thing, it was kicking guys' asses. And it certainly kicked the ass of the installers of DSC.